Hi, this is G-Force. Uh, I'd like to uh, give a little bit back to the HHO community. I've uh, learned an awful lot. Um, hopefully here I can help uh, shed some light on EFIE or electronic fuel injection enhancer circuitry. Um, well, at least I hope so. Um, special thanks to uh, folks that have contributed to the community, Zero Fossil Fuels, Delvis 11, Higher Parrot H2O, and Luther P40, just to mention a few. So, what's so difficult about EFIE? Um, mass sensors are pretty straightforward. All you have to do is uh, splice into uh, the sensor line um, and add resistance. EFEs turn out to be a little bit more challenging from a number of standpoints. So what the ECU or the uh, engine control unit computer in your car with uh, electronic fuel injection systems uh, does is they're trying to strive for an optimal uh, 14.7 to 1 <coughs> air fuel mixture which is deemed to be the stichiometric uh, ideal or where all the fuel is consumed therefore burned therefore giving you the best uh, emissions and performance in your car so with the advent of the uh, oxygen sensor, uh, ECUs were now able to optimize around the uh, air fuel mixture as measured in the exhaust. So oxygen sensors are a little bit tricky. They're um, a negative coefficient sensor and uh, they also don't output until they get up around uh, 600 degrees F. And so it, with a rich mixture or very little oxygen in the exhaust, they will read it somewhere over around 800 millivolts. And what the ECU does is toggles between a rich mixture and a lean mixture. A lean mixture uh, results in much more oxygen in the exhaust, which gives you a lower voltage output. So looking at the sensor output, the sensor actually generates its own voltage and will output between 200 millivolts lean, 800 millivolts rich. And so if you hook an oscilloscope to your oxygen sensor, you will see the oxygen levels oscillate. And this is a fairly uh, slow process. It takes several seconds uh, between uh, the oscillations here. And so what they strive to do is, is to optimize around this uh, 450 uh, or 0.45 volts. So one of the challenges of providing a correction signal when you uh, add the added oxygen from hydrogen electrolysis is you cannot use a voltage source which is referenced to your negative terminal on your battery which is your chassis ground in your automobile. Uh, if you were to take a voltage source that had that reference to ground um, either with a DC to DC converter or using voltage dividers or a regulator or something, what would happen is you would end up, if you connected it to your sensor output, it would clamp, try to clamp the voltage to whatever you had your voltage set at. And you would result in a bad sensor output and your ECO, ECU would go into closed loop, uh, I mean into open loop and would go to a much richer fuel mixture therefore poorer fuel economy. So what you want to do is create a isolated output voltage source to add and so this is what the graph would look like when you have HHO uh, entering 
the engine and being burned, the excess oxygen from that uh, would result in a much uh, offset. In fact, when I measured it, I would when I turned on my uh, hydrogen cell, I would see uh, as much as 200 volts negative. And you could see the whole waveform was shifted down just like this. So I actually um, tried to build one of Zero's um, switching DC to DC ECUs out of parts of my junk box. And uh, while it worked okay, it produced a lot of noise and uh, kind of ruined my ra radio signal. So uh, what I'm going to propose here is using uh, a battery circuit which um, eliminates that noise and you can offset your signal so you get the proper output. So I decided to play around with a program called P-Spice um, which is a, a freeware program that you can use for students. So here is a 1.5 volt battery. They're an A, double A or a triple A battery. You need a 10K resistor and any kind of rectifier diode. I just, this happened to be one of the ones in the P-Spice model uh, library that I plugged in here and you actually forward bias uh, this diode. And that will, the forward bias voltage of a diode is somewhere between 600 and 700 millivolts. Um, in this particular model they fix it at 450 millivolts which if you look at the data sheet for this diode it's starts at 680 or 690, so I don't quite understand why P-Spice decided to clamp it at 450, but the point anyhow is is that the current through here is very small. The drain on the battery is, if you were to do a theoretical calculation, is on the order of hundreds of years because you're only drawing microamps, and by using this forward bias diode it kind of acts as a zener would and clamps this output in that range and then you can use a 100K pot and you splice this in, connect one to the ECU side, one to the oxygen sensor side. So here's a little simulation that I did and I varied the battery voltage which will uh, change over time and so if you sweep the output from uh, 1.55 to 1.2 volts um, or the other way around, you'll notice that the output voltage of this circuit remains fairly constant within a few 10 or 20 millivolts which is more than adequate for that. So I have implemented the circuit and it works very well and uh, I think it's a lot easier and cheaper than the DC to DC. So thanks and I hope you get some.